We have so much going on on board Tangaroa. What's that? I've always been a windsurfing enthusiast, and I have high hopes of teaching Josh Little to windsurf Bic. one day. And that's why we now have a 1990s fluorescent pink Phenomenal. Bic on board Tangaroa. I love it, Blaine. I love the, the colors. The sails are in brand new condition. The mast could probably use a coat of epoxy because it's <laughs> uh, worn outside, so you get the pricklies in your finger if you uh, rub it on things. On the mast, but not the booms? No, the booms, <laughs> like new. So, yeah. It came with two harnesses. It's complete. Completely complete. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> Another harness. The harnesses look brand new. They do. Everything looks brand new, including the board that's from the 90s. I'm not taking that. Well, we gotta put it somewhere. Well, I know, but you can... Well, here, grab my bow rope then. I got your boat. Go your over boat. my head. I guess we're going to be windsurfing this summer. I'm kind of excited because it's been a long time since I've windsurfed. So I'm in my 50s now. I don't think I've windsurfed since I was, gosh, maybe 22, 23. We'll see if I still got it. I wasn't actually that good back then. what Lane is doing. You excited, Josh, to learn how to windsurf? Oh, you're filming? Of course I'm filming. Oh, no. Lane is ju Lane's just getting the gooseneck attached. Maybe. Having a hard time with it. And then Blaine's dream came true. He was off on the board demonstrating to Josh exactly how to windsurf. And of course, I couldn't help but give a few pointers myself. He's it back to turn with the bow into the wind. And as he leans it back, he walks around the other side. And then you just keep leaning the bat, the boom, or sorry, the mast forward, and your bow, which is the front of the boat board, will come off. Yeah, I'm gonna fail, but. Once I confirmed that all the gear was working properly, it was Josh's turn. I was actually quite impressed. Within seven up hauls, he had it down and was actually moving forward. Up, so he rigged up a smaller sail. Of course, as soon as the sail was rigged, the wind died. These are very um, 90s boards. Look how bright they are. I had to laugh though because with the board that Blaine rigged up, he had a water start, even though he was trying so hard not to get wet. Water's not that bad. No. I feel a gust. Oh, oh, oh. No. Jumping, try to pop it, get more speed. Yeah. I don't know if he's gonna get a ton out here. Yeah, pretty close. Are we ready to see update on the wheelhouse? Yeah. Let's see it. Okay, let's check out on how the wheelhouse is doing. So we have doors. Ooh, this is going to be the electronics cabinet. So Blaine's modems and everything in there. <gasps> I think those are Izzy's 
fingerprints. We'll have to talk to her about greasy fingerprints. Looks good. This is all solid. This is going to be beautiful. Oh, I don't even want to know what's happening there. And then we've got two cupboards here. And this is the chart table and the top's already made. But yeah, it's looking good. And of course the flooring that I ripped out. Like I tell everybody, I'm really good at destruction. I'm not very good at construction. Destruction's actually kind of fun. Construction, not so much. I'll show you the bow right now because that's the one that's cracking me up. We are a wood shop right now. <laughs> oh, look at this. I really hope it doesn't rain, but it's supposed to. You got tools everywhere. I thought Blaine was messy when he works. No. <laughs> oh. You so have to watch where you step. Blaine and I only have one place that's kind of safe right now, and it's up there in our hammocks that we can sit at the end of the day. Everything else is a little bit crazy. We're working on the railings. They're coming up quite nicely. Hence the welders here. I don't even know if I can get in the store. Oh, this might be my fault. <laughs> Barbecue. Oh, we're through. Okay, stuff everywhere. Welder stuff. Stepping over everything. And then we kind of have a wood shop down here also. But Blaine's been doing pretty good. He actually kind of cleaned this one up. It's early morning, so Maggie wants to go to shore. She hasn't gone to the washroom yet. Hey, Megs. And I'm going to go down the port side of the boat now. So Blaine's got this door all working. Watch this. It works. And we've got half the railings up. At least those part. And this one all going to be the solid aluminum in here. I haven't sanded the deck then because seriously, there's so much work going on that this is actually protecting my teeth, the caulking. All the way up, back to the bow. And that's the walk around of our boat this morning. The joys of boat refits. But you know what? We're not destructing anymore. We're constructing, which is always a good thing. So I got to look on the positive side. Well, I am just <coughs> wiring in some new LED lights. These are actually one tin volt LEDs. Uh, there's just a better selection of LEDs with one tin. Um, and if we ever lose one tin, there's always flashlights on board. Um, so I'm not worried about that portion of it. Um, yeah. So Janice, this was uh, this was sitting like this on the generator downstairs. This is all from your tile. You mean that was brand new. Yeah, pretty much. This is from your tile removal project. All the crap falling off the ceiling of the engine room. I cleaned your ceiling. I don't know if you guys you. remember, but a couple episodes ago, I took all the tile off of the wheelhouse floor. Oh, he whines so much. <laughs> That's what it should look like. Oh, much better, honey. Now go get the lights off. What are you doing, by the way? Where did those lights go? These are the engine room lights. Oh, okay. So you're going to be able to see in your engine room better. Yeah. And they're, uh, they're a conversion because A, fluorescents use up more power uh, than LEDs. So these are getting converted to LED. And for two, fluorescents have mercury inside of them. And mercury and aluminum do not play well together. Oh, I didn't know that. So, yeah. Well, that's cool. So it removes most of this light. I'm just literally using the casing and the and the reflector. The ballast gets removed and the wires just get wired straight to the AC. I'm excited to see what you do. Me too. 
saving power is always a good thing when you rely all on solar. Having a bit of a Mexican breakfast today. We have, I call it like, um, what do I call it? Um, gallo pinto, but I don't have any lasano sauce. Um, it's from Costa Rica. We kind of used all the, all the lasano sauce. I got to get more. And then just some basted eggs. And if you're wondering what basted is, it's kind of like over easy, but I just put the lid on and the steam cooks the top of the eggs. So there's none of that gooey stuff that I call chicken gooey stuff. But yeah, that's for breakfast. I'm just wiring in some new lights. Me and my uh, now necessary reading glasses. And then an entirely new thing, but uh, still annoying nonetheless. It's always fun, I guess, when you get to that age where you have to start wearing reading glasses and stuff for close up. And wiring is one of those things that requires fairly acute close up vision. So here I am. These are new LED lights and they are actually AC LEDs, but they require removal of the ballast of the old fluorescent fixtures, which is pretty easy. Um, they come right out when you just wire the wires directly to the tombstones. So, yeah, that's what I'm up to. This is the last light, so hopefully we'll have some pretty bright light in here after this. But uh, I'll get some before and after pictures. So what I got here today is I'm kind of messing around with the old shifters, converting them over to digital for the new engines and transmissions. So what I've got is this little guy. What that is is a Hall Effect magnetic switch. Uh, just requires a magnet. So I'm basically mounting this. As you can see when I shift, this arm moves down. That's your shift arm. That's your throttle arm. So what I've done is I've actually marked on the shifter where the, the hole is for the magnetic pickup where it's going to be. So now I can mount my little Hall Effect switches right down in there, like so. And then as that cam comes down, my little tiny magnet will come over the top of the Hall Effect switch and it will engage it. And then this will feed to a solid state relay that takes very little amperage input to trigger a higher amperage output, and that will be my, uh, my triggering. I've been toying with the idea of a pulse width modulated soft start for the solenoid to have the, the transmission kind of modulate a bit, shifting into gear. Uh, it'll be very minimal. Um, that's kind of the way they work them with some of the new controllers anyway, so they don't engage with a really harsh thump. It, it'll give it a little bit of a pulse width modulated ramp in, basically. So what it'll end up, may end up happening is this might end up going to the uh, engine management computer and then I'll have an output that'll do a, a timed pulse width modulated output ramp uh, to make a nice soft engagement on the transmission. But anyway, that's my playing with today. I probably won't mess around with it too much. I just was not feeling super great today, so I figured I'd do something easy and yeah, quick. So here we are. It's been a while since I've actually varnished and I actually can't find my badger hairbrush. Um, so what I did is I threw, and I know you're going to say you dripped all over the teak, but that's okay because I haven't done this teak deck yet, and it's on my list for this week, or for this week, no, this summer. But this is the top of the, um, our computer system. So I threw a coat of gloss on there. Because I find it's easier to build with gloss varnish. I use epiphanes. I find it easier to build with gloss and then throw a couple coats of satin um, on it after. So I'm just building this. I think it looks great. I love the different colors. Look at it. And I love it down here. Look at all the different colors. So yeah, keep varnishing. It's almost too hot to varnish. It was drying really fast. But that is the only place on the boat that's not dusty. <laughs> we 
We have so much shit going on on board Tangaroa. This is my console. It is now sitting there watching TV, but I am varnishing the heck out of it. But the big thing right now is I gotta clean the dinghies again because seriously, neither of them can get up on a plane. It is a sad day. So Blaine is, can you hear that sound? You're moving away from me. This is what happens when you're too lazy to actually take the bridle out from like, I think this was eight months ago we cleaned these dinghies. It's not a bad angle. It's not a great angle either, but is that, that's all still tied, right? It plugs still in. Oh yeah. I need the plug out. <laughs> Can you get it? I think so. Maybe not. There we go. So like the water just could come out. You're not getting up on a plane. Yeah. And then to the left until it comes in tight. There we go. Not bad. I got some cleaning to do. A lot of barnacle. Just it's the orange stuff. Light barnacle. Actually, not as bad as I anticipated. Oh. <laughs> Derba is cleaned and now we're working on the new one because I figured, you know what, I'm already a mess. I have stuff all down the outside of the boat. So we might as well just keep cleaning. Right, Blaine? She says we. I mean we. This time's kind of cool because he's put a block and tackle on the front so it's going to be easier to adjust to get this right. 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 Okay. Up. Hold up. Get the remote. Drop the remote. Woo okay. Up crane. Nailed it. Nailed it. And okay. that's how you do it Tangaroa style. <laughs> Work smarter, not harder. Up and boom down, boom up, oh, okay, and thing down. Okay, sorry, I just didn't see anything happening, so sure. That's because I'm doing both at the same time. Okay, uh, and now go left. Yeah. Left with her. Perfect. There you go. Thank you. Welcome. More music, back to it. Okay. 